All right, attempt number two. <laughs> so Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church, evangelist Randy Keener from New Mana Baptist Church, and we are trying again. Somebody let us know if you can hear us now, if you can hear us. So Brother Randy, go and like and share that video. Uh, can you hear us now? There we go. We have volume. Yeah. We have volume. Yeah, All right. glory. Yeah, glory. So everybody go back and reshare and uh, let us know. All right, gotcha. Boy. Seth Hayes says, gotcha. The, the uh, Lord must be wanting to do something. The Lord must broadcast. be wanting to do something on this broadcast. The devil's getting in the audio. The Somebody fight. say, man, the devil's a fight. Oh. Oh. Anyways, if we're had, doing back in. If I had a quarter for every time oh, I man. heard a preacher talk about the devil being in the sound system. I had a preacher tell me one time, said, Brother Andrew, you know, the... <laughs> You know, if the devil gets in a service, he'll get into the sound yeah. system. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I believe about it. Sometimes this junk just don't work. Uh, yeah, glory. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, we are coming to you live from the studio here. And let us know, Brother Randy, we may just need to let this be the setup for the Backwoods Bible broadcast from now on. The only thing I don't like about it, I don't like the letters behind us. I don't like that pew behind us. I don't like this wall behind us. I hate for people to know we're in a church building, praise God. <laughs> Anyway, but good to see everybody out tonight. Hey, Brother Andy, we are tackling an issue that seems to come up about every every few weeks almost, seems like. Well, you know, there are certain issues that come around a lot. You know, Calvinism, that's what, like, you'll die down, and it you won't hear up. about it for months and sometimes a year or two, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, nowhere, that's it, it starts coming up, and, you know, it's just, this is one of those issues, too. This is one of those issues, and the issue is repentance. Yeah. What is repentance? Is repentance necessary? You know, all this fun stuff we love to talk about repentance. But Brother Randy, it's so important because repentance is is an important issue. It's a Bible issue. But repentance, if done wrong, can send somebody to hell. Yeah. And that's on both both sides. That's on the extreme of making repentance an extreme work of man. And that's on the extreme side of excluding it at all. Yeah. Let me so, throw a quick commercial in here. Do what I'm doing. Like for and me. share the video yeah, for us. Like and share this. I, I don't mean to sidetrack, but we need this video especially. You know, when we deal with Monday night topics, when and we're talking about stuff on Monday night, it's because it, there's a big issue that needs talked about. Right. You know, we don't just do these willy nilly. Like, yeah. there's something going on, and we need to talk about it. So, yeah, Brother Andrew's right. This this is an issue, and it's an issue if you carry it to either extreme. Yeah, when you see that special broadcast mo coming Monday night, if you if me and Brother Randy are doing a video on Monday night, you know that there's something that's got to be talked about. So, mm -hmm. hey, Brother Randy, let's just get a few comments here before we get started. Seth Hayes says, "Gotcha." Joshua Alvarez says, "Now I hear you. Audio's fine." Brian Sweeney says, oops, excuse me, Brian Sweeney says it's good. Will Press says, hear you. Caleb Heather, and Heather Shirley says, technology is possessed. I just met Brother Caleb. Well, he's a smart fella right there. Technology is possessed. Yeah, I say amen. Enough. All right, Seth Hayes says, I like it better this way. All right, we may go, start going to this on the broadcast. Who knows? Dan uh, Godden says, from Philippines, well, glory. Well, glory, Brother Dan. Robert Mark from the Philippines. And Brian Sweeney says, I used to struggle with this a lot, so I feel you on this. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very uh, talked about issue. This is a very debated issue. So, Brother Randy, let's just delve right in. We are going to tell you exactly how we stand on repentance yeah. and how I feel the Bible just ma clearly maps it out for us on what repentance is. Brother Randy, we've come up with a... Uh, a little typical IFB three-point outline, but it's a good one. Why don't you kick us off on that, All Randy? right. Well, point number one is this. Point number one, repentance defined. Now, the thing about this, Brother Andrew, is a lot of times we're frying people who reject the King James Bible mm -hmm. because they change words. Right. But the problem that we have sometimes among our movement is when they change definitions. Definitions. You don't have to change a word if you can change the definition. Right. Uh, you know, repentance defined. So before we even go any further, you know, of course, we believe repentance is necessary. And we'll get into that in just a second. But we've got to define repentance. What exactly is repentance? And before on the previous uh, broadcast, the one that didn't have any audio, we had all this stuff typed up. We're going to flash up on the screen. Yeah. And of course, we don't have that anymore. But repentance is by definition, we can even look at a Greek. Now, we don't need to look at the Greek, but repentance, even the Greek word means 
it's metanoia, and that means change of mind. It comes from two words, meta, as in metamorphosis or metaphysical, which means to change. And then noia means of the mind, like paranoia. And we can find clearly that repentance is a change of mind in the Bible. The first time we ever find the word repentance or the form of it is repent. And it's in Genesis 6 and God's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Brother Randy, that just goes to show, you know, 22 times, I think it is, in the Old Testament alone, God is said to repent. So that throws out the very first definition that people give of repentance, that re repentance is turning from sin. Yeah. Now, if you look it up in an 1828 Webster's Dictionary, there are four definitions for repentance, at least four different definitions for mm -hmm. repentance. But what you have to do is you have to allow the Bible to define itself. I mean, I like an 1828 Webster's Dictionary. But it ain't the Bible. That's right. This is one of those issues where you better just let the Bible define itself. Yes. So if repentance is turning from sin, which, boy, how many times have you heard that said? Repentance yeah. means turning from sin. For which sins then was God turning from when tw I think it's 22 times in the Old Testament he repents? Mm -hmm. You know, and the first time, you know, the law first mentioned, the first person in the Bible that's ever repenting is God. Mm hmm so interesting stuff there. So that's the, the definition of repentance means change of mind. Yeah, it's a specifically when we're talking about salvation, it's a change of mind about your sin, about yourself and about God. Those three things. Or if Brother I, Andrew, I say it's that. a change of mind about sin, self and the Savior. But yeah, he said glory. that was a cheesy outline. Yeah, there ain't nothing cheesy about my Savior. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> say me. <laughs> Got to have that good alliterated outline. But that in in relation to salvation, that's what it is. But it, it is a change of mind that will lead to a change of action. But the action, that's not the necessity of salvation. Okay? Right. It's the change of mind. But what comes later, I actually just preached on this to the bus kids this past Sunday. Proverbs 23 says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If there is a change of mind and heart that takes place, well, then it's going to lead to a change of actions. Right. And I and, and, and you know, have to be careful there because some people say, well, he didn't start living a certain way. Therefore, he must not have gotten saved. Repentance is a change of mind. Excuse me. When repentance happens, heart. Now, I often say that you cannot look at a man's actions to tell whether or not he got saved. You look at his attitude. Mm -hmm. OK, everybody that's watching this right now, when you got saved, there may have been things you quit immediately. OK, but I guarantee every single man on here still struggles with lust. OK, now let me say this. If you're struggling with lust, you feel if you're saved, you should have some kind of remorse, some kind of conviction, some kind of change of attitude. You understand that is a sin and that it's wrong. Now, of course, you may still struggle with lust. Maybe some of you ladies struggle with gossip. I don't know, whatever. But it's the fact that if you are bothered by your sin, see, before I got saved, I wasn't bothered by my sin. Yeah. So I've often said that when you look at somebody's salvation, you cannot judge their you cannot judge their works, but you should be able to judge their attitude. That's why people who say they're saved yet they commit sin and never feel any remorse, never feel bad about it, just do whatever whenever. Those kind of people bother me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get concerned about those people. It's kind of like one of those things they don't have to doubt their salvation. I doubt it for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've known people like that. So, all right, Brother Randy, so we we have defined repentance, yeah. but now we need to understand the next point. What's the next point? Okay, number two is repentance defended. What do we think about it? Well, here's the thing. Repentance is absolutely necessary for salvation. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, and, and more so with me, I don't know why he gets, you know, he doesn't get accused of this as much as I do. People he, like me. People like him, I guess. Brother Randy, how many times have you had somebody ask or say, you know, Brother Sluter doesn't believe in repentance? Yeah, I've heard I, it. I mean, it's a lot, a lot. So many, but I, he just doesn't believe in repentance. I believe in repentance. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is I just don't believe in the way some guys define repentance. Acts 1730, the Bible says and uh, that God hath commanded all men everywhere to repent. That is the book 
you must repent. Brother Randy, you've got a verse there that talks about the repentance and, and defending repentance for salvation. Yeah, and specifically what this verse says, it's 2 Timothy 2.25. It says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And we're not going to deal with the finer points of that verse, but basically what you can glean from 2 Timothy 2.25 is that God gives repentance. Right. You know, it's it's the Lord. It's a work of God that takes place. Yes. And too many people want to define repentance as a work of man. Now, here's the thing. Any man can repent. Any man can repent and trust Christ as Savior. In fact, repentance and belief are two sides of the same coin. I've often heard that. It's, it's repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ. And so the, the thing about it is, is if a man is believing on Jesus Christ to be saved, that is proof that he has already repented. If a man is saying, I'm a dirty, rotten, no good sinner, and I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, and I'm putting all my faith and trust in him to save me from my sin and to, to you know deliver me from hell, then that man has already repented. You can repent without believing, but you can't believe without repenting. That's right. And, and I'll say this. I'll take it a step further. All right, take uh, it. And this may, some people may think this is heresy. It's going to hairless the devil in half of Georgia. That's right. <laughs> when I repented, I didn't even know I repented. That's right. Nobody yeah. told me you've got to repent of your sin to get saved. Mm -hmm. I never heard that when I went forward that morning. All I knew is that I was on my way to hell and I didn't want to go there. And I was believing in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ to get me out of it. Yeah, I, that's all I knew. That was it. But just from that statement, the work of repentance had taken place in my heart mm -hmm. because I knew I couldn't do nothing. Yeah, I knew it took Jesus Christ. And let me say this. You know, we cannot. And, and boy, I, I'm, I'm sure this is going to you know make a lot of people mad. But I heard a preacher say one time, if you want to, he said, if you want to wrap the gospel up in a nutshell with one word, he said, it's not believe, it's repent. The problem here, listen, listen to the problem here with this. The problem with that statement is I think it is 92 times, 92, 93, maybe 96, it's in the 90s. I think it's 92. The word believe in all of its forms is used in the gospel of John, Okay. And now here's the thing about John. John clearly in John chapter 20, let me get there quickly. John chapter 20 and verse 31, John 20, 31 says, but these are written, talking about the gospel of John, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. The sole purpose of the book of John was for men to be saved and the word repent is not one time found in the entire Gospel of John. Hmm. I mean, that was, did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that speaks volumes. You know, I've often heard people say, it's not just about what the Bible does say, but it's what about the Bible, uh, what the Bible doesn't say. Hmm. And if a man has a copy of the Gospel of John in his hand, he can get saved. And that Gospel no, in nowhere contains the word repent. But that's because if a man's believing on Christ for salvation, he has already repented. Would you agree? I mean, you'd agree yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And uh, now I will say this. I've not been reading the comments, but I've been seeing comments flash up there. We are talking about repentance defended, and we 100 percent believe in repentance. But, uh, you know, if, like I say, I've not been reading the comments, but if you want to start a fight about it, go do that on your own page. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and but let's, we don't care, just to be honest. We don't, <laughs> we care. don't care what you think. Um, Let, let's get a few comments if here. You, the, if they like it, good. If they don't, yeah. go write an article about yeah, it. Yeah, go, go write against us. I mean, that's fine. The biggest thing we do these for is, yeah, we want to highlight certain doctrines, but we do want to get you in your Bible. Absolutely. So, um, let's get a few comments, though, uh, here. Corbin Brock says repentance is required, but does not mean turning from sin. I agree with that. Hey, Andrew Shotta says, howdy, fellas. Hey, yeah. Brother Shotta. God Good bless you, you man. Andrew. Uh, well, I, I'm going to be out in March uh, to Nebraska. We're going to get we're going to get a stake. All right. 
Uh, Dan Godden says repentance and reality, repentance and faith are inseparable. Yep, that's true. Just said that. When Bible repentance takes place in salvation, faith occurs. When Bible faith is realized, repentance has been granted. I, I like that. Hey, brother Nick Hyatt says, Andrew and Randy, what's up, guys? What's up, brother? Not much. I'm, we're going to get him on here, and we're going to eat some of them hot peppers he eats. Oh, I like it. Yeah, you ever seen him do those videos? He no. eats hot peppers, and people watch it. It's, ugh. Anyway, uh, Shane Ball says, Bible is the best dictionary. I agree with that. Repentance is a change of mind. Robert Mark, yes, sir. Jeremy Blant says, repentance is a change of mind and heart, and it depends upon the context. God never repents of sin. Absolutely. Brian Sweeney says, I agree with Randy. Yes. Well, both of you. All right. Well, good. Joshua Alvarez says, repentance is sorrow over something. The first time it's used in the Bible, God defines repentance as grief. So for salvation, repentance is sorrow over sin, but it is not the work of turning from sin, which is works. I agree with that. Jeremy Blant says, repentance is not merely sorrow. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh. Let's stop right here and, and comment okay. on this. Fail. Because this is true. Repentance is not godly sorrow. Oh, and I actually have a verse on that. Okay. Hey, I had Jude, the, I I had the foresight for I, this. Well, I think somebody is, is already said what you're getting ready to say. I think he said it here. Judas had sorrow, but he killed himself. Sorrow of the world leads to death. Yeah, and the word that was used in Matthew 27, 3 says, then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented yes. himself. Well, it's like I said before, a man can repent and die and go to hell. Judas, Pharaoh, Pharaoh repented, the Bible said. Even Ahab, not Ahab may have gone to heaven. I'm not sure. <laughs> the verdict's out on Ahab, but Ahab got right with God repented. A man can repent. I say got right with God repented. Ahab repented. Um, but a man can repent and still die and go to hell, but a man cannot believe and and not repent. You, you, if you believe on Christ, you're going to heaven, and that and that's the end of the story. So uh, that's a good point, Brother Jeremy. Patricia Smith says, hello, I'm here, Pastor Andrew. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, Miss Patricia. You call anytime. All right, Jeremy Blantz, Judas had sorrow, but he killed himself, so all the world leads to death. Brian Sweeney says, I agree with you, Jeremy. Absolutely. Joshua Alvarez says, repentance to salvation in 2 Corinthians 7 is repentance after salvation. The two means after they are just as it does in Genesis 4.23. Repentance isn't a work that is more than sorrow. Godly sorrow is saving repentance, not turning from sin. Um, I, I, I agree with that to an extent, I guess. I don't think the context of that verse leads to work salvations any way you look at it. Brian Sweeney says it's definitely not turning from sin. That I agree on. Jeremy Blant says, if I'm going to the store, it doesn't mean it's what I do after having already been there. If I go to the store, it means that is the object or destination. All right. Rick Brooks says, don't you think repentance is defined by its various contexts? Repentance has a Bible de definition and context of one's conduct change in places. But in other places, it might be a context of salvation, not a one size fits all context. That's a point that needs to be brought up as well, Brother Randy. Mm -hmm. I agree with that statement. You do, in certain places with repentance, have to look at the context. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I will agree with that to a certain degree. But I will say this, and it's kind of going back to when we spoke about repentance defined. Yes, repentance is a change of mind. No doubt about that. Right. In the, especially dealing with salvation. But... It will lead to a change in actions as he thinketh in his heart. So is he. Mm -hmm. There will be an outgrowth of thinking differently. Right. All right. Let's look at this here. Shane Ball says, if the lost man believes the gospel, he will repent. That is true. All right. Jeremy Blant says, godly sorrow is not uh, repentance, but works repentance unto salvation. That is true. All right. Joshua Alvarez says in Romans 2, 4 through 5. So, uh, saving repentance is contrasted with hardness and impenitent heart. So repentance that saves a man in the church age is to have a soft, impenitent, or sorry heart, possibly. All right, and then whoever wrote this, let's see, uh, uh, Dan Godden wrote a book there. We're not going to take time to read all that. All right, Brian Sweeney says, I love the point about the book of John. I use that a lot to help people understand it. All right, Robert Marks says, repentance, it is a change of mind that leads to a change of heart, that leads to a change in actions. This change involves both a turning from sin and a turning to God. All right, uh, Angie Sheehan says, amen, that's why I'm here. I mean to get in the Bible. Jeffrey Massey says, what Bible do you use? 
King James Bible. Only. If that's what he's asking. If he's asking about the brand, I use a Cambridge wide margin and this <laughs> one's almost done for. So I'm getting ready to change to a Cambridge wide margin. All right. Will Press says Judas repented himself not to God, to himself not to God. That's true. And Jeff Massey is looking for a good Bible. I recommend the Ruckman Reference Bible. All right. Now, I want, you to, I want us to look here because here we, we read all the comments. We want to get everybody in there, get everybody's opinion, whatever. Uh, but here's the last point. Brother Randy, we've looked at repentance defined. We've looked at repentance defended. But now we got to look at the last and most important point, mm. And that is what? Repentance distorted. Repentance distorted. Now, Brother Randy, what do we mean by repentance distorted? Well, me personally, and, and I think we came to an agreement. This is what I threw out before the broadcast, that when repentance is distorted the majority of the time, it's because somebody is focusing on the outcome. Yeah. Instead of the change of mind that takes place, they're focusing on the actions. See, I've often heard that lordship salvationists make the fruit of repentance or makes the fruit of salvation, the root of salvation, hmm. you know, and, and that's so true. The, the thing about repentance distorted is that you have to be so careful how you present repentance to a lost person, because if that lost person thinks in any way that his turning from sin, a change in action, uh, uh, you know, a turning around of lifestyle or doing any good works has anything to do with his salvation, then that man is still lost. He has not true. He does not have true saving faith in the sacrifice of Christ. That's right. He's trusting in himself and in what he can do if it's about his issues. Mm -hmm. and, and let's just clear the air on something, Brother Randy. And, and I, I don't remember if we talked about this or not before the broadcast, but if not, here it is. Um, you know, we mentioned Chick Tracks yeah. Thursday night on the broadcast. Now, I went back and listened to it. We didn't say anything negative about Chick Tracks. And I'll repeat what I said about Jack Chick. I said this on the broadcast Thursday night, that Jack Chick was a great Christian. He's in heaven now. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no telling how many people are either there or on their way there because of Jack Chick. Yeah. So no issue. And we said, though, that we did not use chick tracks because of the phrase in the back of them, be willing to turn from sin. Now, I understand to an extent what that is talking about, but I would never want to give a lost person something that would ever have the possibility of mistaking or of giving them the idea or the false idea that they have to turn from their sin to be saved. I understand it says be willing. But Brother Randy, I think me and you both obviously both agree on the fact that that phrase to a lost person and with all the false doctrine going around, I think that that's very dangerous as far as confusing a lost person, what he has to do to be saved. It, it can bring confusion. Now, if you give out Chick Tracks, I don't think Jack Chick was messed up on the gospel. I don't either. Like nope. that. I mean, he is a Bible student, great man, and uh, the ministry is continuing in a good way. But um, personally, that's where I stand on it. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't want to give them out, I, well, guess what? I'm not going to. <laughs> and if you want to, go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's so much apathy right here. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, if you want to give them out, I'm not going to chase you down and tell you how dumb you are. Uh, the only reason I don't is because I am afraid of the potential of a little bit of confusion. Yeah. Unless I'm standing there explaining. Exactly. So we understand be willing to turn from sin. But like we said, I, I think that, that that can bring, I think it brings unnecessary confusion uh, to, to the, to the, to the table with that. But when we talk about repentance disordered, we're, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about heavy repentance. We're talking about, you know, turning from sin. We're talking about, you know, praying through, we're talking about that kind of stuff. You know, I've heard people say that if, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not laid over an altar for two hours, sobbing your eyes out because of your sin that you didn't really have godly sorrow, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Brother Randy, you know, here's the thing about it. When a man believes there should be, I believe, an understanding that he's a sinner, I think that he should have an understanding that his sin is what separates him from God. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I think anything beyond that, you're, you're treading into dangerous territory. Yeah. Well, let me just mention this because a comment just flashed up from Rick Brooks. Uh, it says that willing is a condition of the mind, seems to me. I agree, Rick. I agree that willing is a condition of the mind. The point I'm making is not saying don't use them. The point I'm making is that 
in the hands of a sinner, there's a lot left that could be misunderstood. Right. If you're just dropping a track off and leaving. Now, there's I, I know there's thousands of people who found chick tracks in bathrooms and on tables who read them and got saved. No doubt about it. There's just always that potential there. Yeah. So. Um, and, and so that's what that's that's the whole thing with the chick tracks. Nowhere did we ever bash them. Um, but but anyway, if you want to use them, great. We personally don't. Now, if if, if David Daniels, the guy that's over him, takes that little phrase out, I'm going to be stamping Bible Baptist Church on the back of thousands. of them. You yeah. know, I'll use them in a heartbeat. So. Oh, and I've I've given out in my life. I've given out literally thousand upon thousands of chick tracks, too. So, yeah. So, uh now, Brother Randy, let's talk about, you know, we, we've been our, given our three points, define, re, define, re, repentance defined, repentance defended, repentance distorted. Let's just kind of close out here and just uh, and just kind of put the, the finishing touch on this whole idea or excuse me, this whole uh, debate about repentance, because it is literally dividing fundamentalism. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, if if we sat down and hashed this out like person to person instead of fighting over Facebook, like a bunch of teenage girls, then we would probably let me douse some water on brother. Randy well, I'm just saying we would probably <laughs> agree on, on most of it. A lot of it's just semantics and pride. Yeah. It's pride and semantics. And, um, that's, that's what generally happens uh, on social media. <laughs> How well, about that? and I would say this now people may get mad at me, over this, but I feel like a lot of this repentance thing is there are guys who we there are guys who had very drastic, quick changes in their Christian life. You know, when they got saved, it was very quick and drastic. And they'll look at somebody else who is not doing the same thing that they did immediately and like it or lump it, you're mad because that person gets to go to heaven and they're not doing the same things you're doing. Mm -hmm. But he that comes at 11 out, 11th hour receives the same benefit. Uh, so here's the thing about it. If a man's believing, you're going to get more, more rewards than him. You know, God's not, you know, God's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. But the fact of the matter is, is we either believe in salvation by grace through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing, or we don't. Yeah. And that's the issue. And, and let me just kind of put a fine point on repentance distorted. A lot of guys who are really heavy on repentance, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to, call any names because I'm not talking a, about guys in our circle, um, really even in fundamentalism overall. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like more the hyper Calvinist leaning guys. Yeah. Uh, when they're dealing with repentance, one of the biggest things that you'll notice about them is they seem to think that they can always point out who got saved and who didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a big deal for them. Well, they didn't repent. They didn't do this. You know, I can tell, I don't even think they're really saved. Uh, how are, how can you tell the matters of the heart? How can you tell what God's doing in somebody's heart? The man, and I won't say his name because I'd never embarrass him for the world, but the man who taught me to fall in love with my King James Bible when I was a young teenager, he got out in the world for several years, uh, about three or four years, got out in the world, just made a mess of his life, uh, and, and it was a disaster. Anybody who would have saw him and not known him from before, he had literally two thirds of the Bible memorized, memorized. I heard him preach quoting chapters of the book of Exodus. Who memorizes the book of Exodus? He quoted chapters. But if you would have met him in that three years or if some of these, um, you know, hard repentance, hyper Calvinist leaning guys would have met him. They would have said he's not saved. Mm hmm. Now he's back in because God kept working on him, but you couldn't tell God was working on him because mm -hmm. he was mean. And, you know, here's the thing, folks. You don't know. You say, well, he doesn't have any remorse over his sin. You don't know what he's got. No. You don't know what's going on. You cannot see his heart. So, I listen, and somebody somebody just this morning said, well, you don't, you, you're, just, you're, you're giving people the gospel, and they're just saying a prayer so that, so that you'll get off their front porch. Maybe. But whose fault is that? Mine or theirs? I, Brother Randy's been soul winning with me. You know, and this is what we often get accused of. Well, you don't have any repentance when you go out soul winning. That's screen door evangelism. Listen, I give the gospel. I ask them, would you like to pray? If they say no, I give no. I, I push back. Zero, there is zero pushback. I say, okay, yeah. well, you know what you need to do. You ever need me, call me. And now some guys will sit there and say, are you sure? You'll die and go to hell. You know, I don't even do that. 
Because if what I've just given them doesn't convince them, me sitting there and begging them and trying to, you know, get them into a sales pitch, it ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So I think we got to be very careful. Just because there have been some who have falsely professed Christ doesn't mean that should scare us away from soul winning and telling people the gospel and trying to see people saved. Uh, and, and just because you say, well, they didn't truly repent, you don't know what they did. No, you don't. And, and if they answer in the affirmative mm -hmm. that they believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, what else am I expected to do? Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Ghost that does the work. We we plant, we water, but it's God that gives the increase. That's true. And there's once I give them the message and bring them to a point of decision, it's out of my hands. And, you know, it's funny. Let me just go on a, a, a tiny rant here. It's amazing to me that all these heavy repentance guys and all these Calvin, especially like Calvinists, these guys who start out fundamental IFB, like, you know, just like me, they get a hold of Calvinism. And the next thing, you know, they've got a hold of Calvinism, they become enlightened and they become all these, you know, these heavy repentance guys. There has to be a change. But yet they drop their dress standards. They start using other translations of the Bible. You know, they get into, you know, they think all of a sudden drinking beer is okay and all the, it's amazing they get a hold of this repentance and all of a sudden all their standards go away. <laughs> now, I mean, have yeah. you noticed that? I have. What man. in the world sense does that make? I had a guy just the other day who he was telling me, well, you're nothing but an easy believer. You're just leading all those people to hell because you're an easy believer. His wife, and you can disagree with this, fine, but what I'm saying is, is his wife dresses dresses very improperly. Uh, uh, his uh, He listens to ungodly music, watches ungodly TV. He goes, I mean, just all this crazy stuff. I mean, you know, I, our family, not to brag, but our family has much higher standards than this guy, yet I'm the easy believest. <laughs> well, I've noticed it's amazing. generally when you add works to salvation, I've seen it with denominations that do at works uh, in the mountains. I know mainstream free will, mainstream church of God isn't exactly like this, but in the mountains, there's a lot of free will church of God and they have a strong works influence mm -hmm. in their salvation. And you know, uh, they turn out to be one of two people. Either they are the most arrogant people you've ever met or they are some of the most wicked people you've ever met. Yeah. And, uh, and then they tell you, well, I just believe you got to live it. Well, I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. So when you add works to salvation, because see, that's what the Calvinist does. He waves the flag of grace while he's giving you works. Mm -hmm. And when you add works to salvation, whether it's to get it or keep it, um, it, it really does a lot to take away. That's what living. when Sam Gipp said this, he, he debated a bunch of Calvinists one time. Sam Gipp did. It's called The Great Debate. You can go on his website and order at samgipp.com. But he said that, Hyper Calvinism and hyper Arminianism are two th are, are the same have the same ends. They both lead to works. Mm -hmm. And he said that, and I'm like, what? And it's true. It is. True. I, it's true. Hyper Calvinism, hyper Arminianism, both of them point to works as for salvation. Yeah. And if you ask a true Calvinist, a true Calvinist, what the assurance of his salvation is, it's because he says. I have fruits that are meat for repentance and I'll, you know, at the end of my life, if I've persevered. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's about works. It's about works. So, well, if you've joined at the end, we're getting ready to close it down, but please go back and watch the whole thing and like, and share this, like, video. and share the video. Hey, let, let the controversy, you ain't even got to say nothing. Just like, and share this video. And let me say this in closing, people accuse us of being an easy, easy believe us. My, my defense for that is, Show me what a hard one is, and I'll let you know if I'm an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah, like and share. If you disagree with us, that's fine. We're not going to hate you. We're not going to quit being your friend. But go on your own page and write an article, okay? Yeah. Um, because you, you can write one here, but we're probably not going to read it. So. We're not, yeah. If you've, written, <laughs> if you've written a huge article, we're not going to read any more of the comments. I don't yeah. even know what they are. I've honestly I've not been looking at them. them. I don't know. So we're not reading more there. If you've written an article on this thing, it's probably not going to get read. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but like, and share the video. Thank you for everybody for watching. Brother Randy, you got any closing thoughts? No, just uh, go right, right on your own, make your own video and um, get in the book. Yeah. Get in the book. All right. Don't be adding works to salvation. You'll damn people to hell. That's right. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and close out. Reminder, Thursday night, 830. Be here for the Backwoods Bible broadcast Q&A. 8.30 p.m. Have your questions ready. Remember, we're only doing live questions. No pre-submitted questions anymore, all right? God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the night.